This is how you get your wheels from looking all trashy with curb rash or chemical stains or slight small dents to looking like this, almost brand new, with only a few dollars in paint. I'm high as I've ever been, higher than heaven sits. Roll up my weed and think about my exes and jealousness, how to stay current and relevant. So you're gonna start off by needing some sandpaper. I recommend getting 220, 400, and 800 grit. You might also need uh, a wet sponge so you can distribute the sandpaper evenly and not put too much pressure on your fingertip only. And of course, you're gonna need some wheel paint. Uh, this is the Duplicolor one. And you're gonna need some wheel gloss clear coat. You can go matte or gloss, it doesn't matter, but you do need a clear coat if you want this thing to last more than like five minutes. An optional um, is some Bondo glazing and spot putty. Uh, this thing basically fills in some of the deeper scratches that you can't get while sanding, um, especially if you have really bad curb rash. This product works great. So to begin, you're probably gonna wanna clean uh, your wheels. Of course, um, you're gonna wanna take them off first and then uh, rinse them down real quick uh, the back, make sure there's no grease or anything that might drip onto the front while you're painting it. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and clean your wheels. Just with some soapy water and stuff, just get rid of all the dirt and all the grime that's been on there for quite some time. Cause when you start sanding, um, you're gonna want things clean or else things are gonna be rough and you're gonna start sanding off dirt, which doesn't make any sense. So once you clean the wheels, um, you're gonna wanna start to sand. So to start off, you're gonna want uh, the lower grit first, cause the lower grit um, has more uh, rough surface, which will help tackle those bigger dents and those big parts of the curb rash. And then from there, um, go on to the 400 and then 800 if you want to make sure everything is smooth. So the lower the grit, um, the more rugged and uh, sharp um, the paper is and the higher the grit the more fine it is and it won't cause as many deep scratches and if your wheels are pretty bad as mentioned you're gonna want to use uh, the bondo the little paste to put it on you're gonna have to mix the the cream with the hardener um, mix it up for a bit and apply it onto the wheels so for us um, the carb rash on our wheels were pretty bad uh, so we just put the bondo on on the edge of the rim all along to cover up the huge curb rash. They did a pretty good job. Um, then after you put the Bondo, uh, just give it time to dry. The hardener will make it harden um, after a while, probably in about like 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, you can go ahead and start sanding the Bondo down until you get it flat and flush with the rest of your sanding. So as mentioned, you just want things as smooth as possible. So when you start painting, the finish looks pretty good. You can either wet sand or dry sand, it really doesn't matter. For me, I found that dry sanding was easier because you actually get to see um, the little particles and flakes of metal um, actually coming off, which is kind of cool. But um, just make sure everything is flat because once you paint it, any little imperfections or grooves or anything that you have on the wheel is gonna show uh, once you paint everything at the end. Now, once you're finished sanding everything down, I'd probably uh, give the wheel a quick rinse Make sure there's no particles of dust or sand uh, from the sanding paper or metallic flakes to get on the paint. So before you start painting, make sure you need to mask off like the wheels and everything. So as these are M Sport wheels, we had to mask off the little M logo as well as the, the tire stem. So just use some masking tape and for the whole tire, um, you can go ahead and use something simple like index cards. Just put index cards along the hole. Uh, rim to cover up the tire so you don't get any overspray on them and after that uh, Before you start painting just make sure you shake up your can real good. These cans have probably been sitting uh, at, at the shop or whatever for quite a while So you need to make sure you shake this thing really good or else um, it might come out with a different types of paint metallic or non-metallic especially this metallic ones um, You're gonna want to shake them real good. So it comes out all even or else it'll come out um, looking nasty. Now, once you're ready to give it the first coat, just go over it with um, a nice little coat. Um, you don't want things uh, very heavy, especially with metallic paint. Um, it tends to run 
little bit easier than regular paint. So just put on a light coat as your first one and from there you can go ahead and add uh, more larger coats after the first one. So I recommend um, doing like five to 10 minutes um, after each coat uh, as wait time so it can dry a little bit and then continuing on to the next coat. So for the actual base color, um, I went ahead and did uh, three coats. Um, it's recommended that you do three coats, but honestly, um, for some of the wheels, they were a little bit more scratched. And with the Bondo, I had to go over it um, maybe four or five times because the, the Bondo, for some reason, the pink, the pink Bondo didn't really want to get covered by the, the paint. But just go over it uh, a couple more times and it should cover it right up. Now once you're done with your base coat, you can uh, go ahead and move on to the clear coat. So I'm using the Duplicolor Gloss Clear Coat. So you go ahead and just apply it onto uh, the wheel as it is um, a little, after it is a little dry. So you're gonna apply um, at least three coats. Make sure you mix it good as well. On one of the wheels, I really didn't mix it. And um, it's more like metallic-y, glittery looking than the other ones. So just make sure you, you mix things really well and don't put too much or else it might run and you might have to wipe down the area, let it dry and then paint over it again. That's kind of a hassle uh, with these spray paints. But honestly, um, the end results speak for themselves. Um, you'll see here um, that from the before and after, um, huge difference. Before there was a bunch of curb rash and this whole like chemical wash or whatever stained onto the face of the, the wheel. Um, and now, honestly, it's um, nice and smooth. Um, everything looks even. There's still a little um, dents and scratches here and there. You can't really see them as much, especially the curb rash. The curb rash is almost uh, virtually eliminated, eliminated completely. Um, and honestly, it looks pretty good. So let me go. Let me know what you guys think about uh, these DIY wheels. Um, I know if you're gonna want to paint like another color, like maybe paint them black or something, um, you're probably gonna wanna get some primer first, um, especially if you're gonna be wanting to sand down um, the base coat um, from your existing wheels. Go ahead and get some primer so things will stick on easier and last longer. But for these, um, these wheels weren't that bad. It was just the, the curb rash and just a little chemical stains here and there. Um, so no, not using primer, um, it really doesn't matter for these light ones. But like I said, if you were gonna paint your wheels like a whole nother color, just go ahead and use primer. Um, the results will last uh, a bit longer if you do. If you're worried about the clear coat lasting, just go ahead and give it some more clear coats in like two months. Um, every so often, just give it uh, a quick coat, make sure everything is uh, sealed up so you don't get any chipping or anything but let me go let me know what you guys think about these wheels um, comment down below any other mods I'm gonna be doing um, that you want me to do to the e e46 um, my next video um, I'm actually going to be installing a, an aux input on the e46 so I have the business radio on here no touchscreen or anything um, but uh, for some reason, these things from factory didn't come with no damn aux cable or aux input. So you can't plug in your phone or anything. There's no Bluetooth, of course, because it's from like 2005. But um, with, the, with one little cable and like an hour um, of work, you can basically add an aux input to your E46. So be on the lookout for that video. It'll probably be out next week. But yeah, I guess that's about it for this video. Like and subscribe for more videos. And see you guys later. Peace.